Hello guys, I'm going to quilt to quilt today with y'all. I've had a lot of questions on how do I load my quilt on the long arm, how do I quilt it, how do I choose the designs, things like that. So I'm going to answer a bunch of them questions today. Please, please, please don't look at the junk in the back of my room. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around. This is what I have. I have my quilt top loaded onto my long arm. So, I have a Gracie, mm, I can't remember how many feet it is. It's a Gracie wood frame, and I have a Cunique 15 Pro, and I lovingly call her Gracie. So, what I have here is my backing fabric that I have pinned to this bar, which is called your belly bar. And this bar, which is called your take-up bar. See, and I got them pinned right on the pin line of your um, of your litter cloths. I have it over, like it's going over this bar. And I have it under this bar, under your take-up bar. Okay, and I have it clipped on both sides. I have the batting, and I'm just going to float that right on top. It's not pinned to anything. And then I have my top right here that I'm in the process of basting on. And it is not pinned to anything. I'm just going to baste it. See here, I'm just going to baste it into the quilt. I mean, baste the quilt into the long arm. And then I'm going to use these quilt clips by the Grace Company. And it holds your quilt to your pole like this. They just snap on. See, they're just a circle. And they just snap right on. So we're going to go step by step on how I do this. So I'm going to put you on the tripod and I'm going to finish basting it. Bear with me. Okay, I hope you can see the whole quilt. Again, don't look at my junk. I'm sorry. I'm going to go finish basting it and I'll be um, right back. One thing I do have, if you can see, is I have a measure tape, a tape measure right here, and I have these alligator clips, just a regular alligator clip, and I have them marking special spots on my quilt, so where, um, say, a border fabric or something would come up, the outsides, both the outsides of the quilt, and I've marked the inside of the blue border here, and I've got one directly in the middle and that's only going to let me make sure as I advance the quilt it um doesn't get wonky or sideways or anything and uh and when I advance the quilt it advances equally or whether I need to shift it one way or the other way or you know kind of give it a little stretchy stretch on one side or something you know we'll work it out all right guys so um I have the quilt basted in as you can see, the tablet's booted up. I'm going to turn on QuiltCat. I have QCT5. Um, I just have the beginners. I don't have a pro or the gold. I just have beginners. So I'm going to move in a little bit so you can see my thinking process on how I choose the um, designs and patterns and everything that I put on. So give me a second. Okay, so this cord right here, guys, is um, the power cord to my tablet because, you know, I'm not one of them responsible people and charge my tablet like I should. So I just kind of wrap it around my handle here. I don't know if you can see what I did. Let me see. Yeah, there you go. See, I just kind of wrap it around my handle here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open QCT5, which is called Cre uh, Quilters Creative Touch 
five. And when you load this program, you want to make sure your machine is um, kind of in the center of your quilt and kind of in the center between the in the throat of the machine because it's going to move and calibrate it and center it. All right, now it's going to load. And it's going to ask you what you want to do. Do you want to do it in blocks or do you want to do a pentagram? I think I'm just going to do, I'm not, uh, select and sew is where you can do just the squares, individual squares, if you want something in there or just the individual borders. You can um, line all that up, but I'm not going to get into that today. I'm just going to do something very simple and do a pentagraph. So I'm going to click on that. Let me see if I can get y'all where I can see it all. Well, I don't know if that helped or not. My bad, I'm sorry. So now what it's saying is you need to mark your safe zones. And it says top left. So I'm going to move the machine over here. I might be out of the computer, I'm sorry. There we go. I'm going to move it over here to the top left. I'm going to move the machine as far up as I can and as far to the left as I can without it causing any problems. So right there is my top left. And I'm going to hit top left. Now it wants the bottom right. Let me see if I can hook that on there somewhere. There we go. So now I'm going to come over here. And you can't see the quilt, but I'm going to bring up the machine as far forward as I can and off the quilt about an inch, an inch and a half maybe. And hit bottom right. And that's how it's going to load. Just like that. The next thing I do before I choose my, choose my designs is I want to measure the quilt. I'm looking at my quilt right now making sure I removed all of my tack down pins and all when I placed it and everything. So I'm going to hit the tape measure that's right here. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit more so you can see that. I hope you can see that. I'm going to hit the tape measure right here. And it's going to ask me to move it all the way to the left again and place it where I want it and then hit that button. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to move it all the way to the top where my quilt is starting. I kind of want it a little bit over the quilt, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, so my starts and stops are off of my quilt. And when I trim it, I trim that off anyway so nobody sees it. So I'm going to go right there and I'm going to hit that button. So let me show you when I went over there. This is the button I hit right here. Oh, you got a glare you can't see, can you? So I hit this very first button right here with the green line. <clears throat> so now, I'm just so sorry I keep moving the camera. I'm in a limited space here. I really don't have a whole, a whole lot of room, so I apologize. So I'm going to come over here. It doesn't matter where you're at on this side, and I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch or so off of the side of my quilt, and I'm going to hit this line right there. So it's these two, these top two buttons that you're touching. If you think you've done it correctly, hit the black sewing machine and it's going to move it to the center of the quilt. It's going to say, I'm going to, it says, please ensure that your needle is up. I always say, don't show this again because it's very annoying throughout the day. There was some way I could. Turn that light off. So y'all could see. So I'm just going to take this pin 
and this is what I use so so line air erase pen I hope you can see that and I'm gonna mark right down where my needle is and it should be right on your basting stitches if you baste it about you know an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or so from the outside of your quilt that's where your line should be and I just put a little dot right down there where where my needles at okay so now we need to choose a thread color mm. Let's see what color thread do I want. Maybe a sand color. Oh, I think that'll be very pretty. The thread I'm using is finesse thread from um, the Grace Company. That's what I'm using. Yeah, I think we're going to use that. Set this back over here for a minute. So, I'm going to run some bobbins and get everything ready and I'll be right back. I wanted to hop right on here before I run my bobbins and tell you once you're here, your machine moves it here. I already clicked it because, you know, I'm retarded. You want to hit apply measurement. It's like you see like the little black machine was here right on the side of it. It said apply measurement. If you click that one, then you'll have control back of your machine. Okay, so now I'm going to run a bobbin and I'll be right. All right, guys, I got my bobbins run and I did um run seven bobbins this is a queen size quilt so it's going to take seven probably eight depending on the pattern that we choose so the screen is exactly like it was when we left i'm going to select pattern right here and it's going to come up with all the stock patterns that come with qct5 Okay, um, I purchased my a lot of my patterns from Urban Elements, but you can Google um, digital quilting designs and it comes up a lot for um, for you to choose from different different. There's like creative. What is the name of that one? Creative. I don't know. I can't remember. There's a uh, there's a couple of three or so that I use. A lot to purchase mine from oh uh, let's see what we want on this quilt hmm. let's do some feathers how about some feathers Okay, so this is how it comes in when it first comes in, and it looks really stretched and really distorted. So this is where you get to design it how you want to. Move it a little bit here, move it a little bit there. Add a couple, take a couple away, whatever. And that is with the pattern plus. He says pattern one here. So if I hit the plus here, it's going to add another one. If I hit it again, it's going to add another one. And I'm going to see how there's a gap right here between them. The first set of hearts lets you combine them. And then the second set of heart, the first set of hearts, second button lets you um, nest them. So that's the one I want for this pattern. I want mine to be nested together. Um, let's do four. Yeah. So if you come here and you hit show grid, It'll show you in inches what your 
um, design will look like. I did hit okay, did I not? Oh, now it says not responding. Let's give it a second to respond. Okay, so you see all the little blue checker marks, the little boxes here. That's an inch, that's an inch square. So our feather motif will be one, two, three, four, five, six inches long. I think that's a pretty good size. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. But then I kind of look on the sides of the quilt and I see the pink right here is where it nests, like the, um, the feathers nest to the feather before it. And on this side, there is a T90 little itty bitty bit right here and I don't want that T90 little bit there because that's a thread break and I don't want a thread break. So I'm going to move the design over this way a tiny bit until I can't see this pink right here no more. So I'm going to move a little bit more until I can't see that pink no more. And it put that pink on this side. So I've already had thread breaks on this side I'm okay with. I didn't want the machine to come down here and then do just a little, a little bitty bit that will probably even be off of the quilt. All right, so since this is such a long quilt, this is a 84 by, I think, 97 quilt. Um, I won't be able to do the whole total 11 or 15 inches that my machine will do when I get to the end because you know when it when it gets up on the take up bar you lose a lot of inches so I'm gonna put mine on 10 I think I'll be able to do 10 inches all the way across and then I'm gonna change my pattern height to 10 see how it adjusts it and it's easy as that guys so right now I'm gonna go sew in zones I'm gonna touch sew in zones Sorry guys, that was heavy hit. He came in. And it's going to ask you if you would like to save what you've done. Um, in my opinion, saving is a good thing. In case, say, the power goes out, or you get a glitch in your mach machine, or something like that, or maybe emergency comes up, you have to stop. I would save this design because it saves it in the length that you measured it. Um the amount that it put across here. So I'm going to hit yes. And I'm going to name it. Already got one name feather, so I'm just going to override it. Okay. So this is what your zone looks like. Really hope you can see that. Let's scoot you in just a little bit. And if you can see, there's a couple of things on the screen that we need to get started. If you can see these blue dots right here, everywhere there's a blue dot, that's a thread break. We don't want the thread to break. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to optimize. And it's going to bring the design into the optimizer, which is this. And I want to remove all. And that's going to remove all thread breaks. So it's going to kind of scan it and read it and um, remove all of the thread where the thread would break it. Just It's going to make it a continuous sew instead of a jump stitch. Then it's going to ask you if you want to connect the first and last point. I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but my answer is no. And then I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, as it recalculates the placement, it will remove the blue dots. There we go. Okay. So this button is pretty self-explanatory. It says release carriage. It gives you motion, uh, gives you back control of your machine. This one is to repair pattern. What we do with the repair pattern is if your bobbin runs out or say for some reason you start getting missed stitches or something like that and you need to pull some thread out and restart the pattern you would go there you would repair the pattern you pull bobbin at the beginning and the end of your design so you don't have no threads or nests like like thread 
balls of ugh, on the bottom of your quilt so you pull it to the top and then you just bury your threads in so obviously means so trace means if you're not quite sure the placement that you placed your design if you hit trace it will trace the design without sewing it so the machine will do the motion without actually sewing it and then you got a red toolbox so if you click on the red toolbox you've got some options here it says you can move to the start point which once you hit that it means the machine's going to automatically move to the start point then you have set safe area if you're not quite sure your safe area that you set or you got um you want to move it a little larger or shrink it in some you can reset your safe area at this time you can do a single stitch which basically just pulls your bobbin to the top um, release carriage you can remeasure it if you need to now release sewing machine is something completely different than release carriage when you release sewing machine you have control of your sewing machine um, but your carriage doesn't move so it kind of locks it into where it's at but you still have like you can move your machine forwards and backwards or what have you and then a baste so that's how you baste it as you as you advance it you know to baste down both sides of your quilt you will just click on baste you'll see that in a minute as I baste and then I'm just gonna click out of here okay let me see if I can get you where you can see the quilt a little bit better Alright guys, I've moved you a little bit so that you can actually see some of the quilt. Um, I have the needle lined up exactly right over that dot that we drew a while ago when it put it in the center. Just right there, just perfect over that dot. And I'm going to hit this box that has the yellow dot on it. I'm going to touch that. And what that's going to do is center the design in our quilt. So the size of our quilt. It just kind of shifts it up and down and moves it around until it's where it needs to be on your quilt and that's it guys that's as easy as it is i'm going to hit pull bobbin and we're going to start sewing so i'm going to take you off of the tripod and hold you in my hand so that you can actually see what it's doing now let me warn you a little bit these machines are a little loud so you may not be able to hear me talk or i may mute it or something like that i don't know what i'll do but um they, they do they are loud they, they do make some noise so I'm gonna hit pull bobbin and it's gonna engage the carriage and it's gonna move over here to the start point It's always good to have you a pair of scissors on your machine. Okay. I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Okay. So you can't see where it went, but it went way over there at the very beginning. If you can see, it's right off the edge of the quilt, so that when it does it, when it goes down, it pulls its bobbin up. It's not even going to be on the quilt. It's going to be off to the side of it. So I'm going to hit single stitch while holding the tail. And if I pull it up, it's going to pull up the bobbin, sweep it under. And now I've got both the bobbin thread and the top thread in my hand. See, I've got both of them, one here, one here. And then basically that's it. So now I'm going to hit soap. There's a five second delay on it once you hit sew before it actually starts sewing. It gives you time to move your fingers out of the way or pull a thread or whatever that you need to do. But um, yeah, this is a five second delay and it's, it's annoying sometimes, but it is what it is. I'll let it sew for a little bit and then I'll kind of zoom you in, take you off the tripod and take you over to it and let you see exactly what it's sewing. 
It's actually very beautiful. If you can see on the screen, there's a dark blue line that's actually going along as the machine as the machine is sewing. That dark blue line is giving you a visual of where it's at in the pattern. So let me take you off of here. I know I'm sorry. Go around. So this is actually what it's sewing. Not very beautiful. So what I'll do is I'll watch this while it sews and then um, as I as it sews this row sorry I don't need you to look at my nose and in my mouth I'm sorry as it sews um, this row when it gets to the end of this row will advance the quilt and then well, I'll show you how to advance it and you basically do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again until you get to the end of your design. If you listen to the machine run, you can actually tell a difference when your bobbin runs out. Some of the more expensive machines do have the bobbin thing, alert thing on it to where it'll tell you the bobbin's out. Mine does not. This one, you just have to listen to it. It gets real tinny, and then it doesn't actually sound like it's sewing. You can tell it sounds like it's running on nothing, like there's no bobbin there. I think that's beautiful. That's going to look really pretty with this design. This quilt top is, the pattern is Summer in the Park. Um, it's by Missouri Star. The pattern is by Missouri Star. This is actually a customer's quilt. But it is beautiful. One thing I'd like to mention while the machine is running is the maintenance on your machine. You want to make sure you oil your machine. Um, every three bobbins that I change, and this is just my preference, this is not what the, the manual said. I think the manual actually said every bobbin. But every three bobbins, I take and put a drop of oil into the bobbin case. And then right here on the machine, there's two little holes right behind this, this right. And you just put a drop of oil in it at the beginning before you start. I also want to take a little, uh, like an old toothbrush or the brush that came with it. And um, get all the lint and dust out of it, guys. Because there's a lot of lint that acquires from the batting and the back end and all this. The thread itself causes lint. So I'll shut up now and let the design sew. I'll probably fast forward from here on out until we get to um, where you need to advance it. That is such a pretty stitch. That's so pretty. Absolutely beautiful.
All right, guys, so it's finishing off right now. It's putting its little lock stitches in, and it has just released the carriage. So I'm going to go over there, but um, when the machine moves, it's going to move back here to the center. So you'll, I'm just going to leave y'all right here. Maybe it works out. I hope so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on my string and give me a little bit of movement with my thread. And then I'm going to hit pull bobbin. And the machine said it had timed out because it had been a minute before anybody had touched the screen. So now it's going to run again. It went up to where the last stitch was. I'm going to hit single stitch. I'm going to swipe that under there and pick up my bobbin stitches. I'm in bobbin thread, so I have two now. I'm going to trim them. Then I'm going to hit back. And because we're through with this zone, I'm going to hit finish zone. And that's going to move back over here to the middle. At the edge of my quilt here, it kind of folded in the edge a little bit, so I'm going to snip them threads just so I can lay that back down flat. And again, right here. The peachy dog is more in. All right, so when it gets here, it changes the screen a little bit. I hope you can see that. So in this little box that, that come up is going to let you mark your center of your quilt for your next zone. As you advance the quilt, this is where you want to line it up to. So I'm going to hold my thread. I'm going to hit single stitch. So it took a stitch. So being that I pulled this a little bit, now my bobbin thread is up. And I'm going to hit continue, yes, release carriage. So now I have control of my machine. Okay, so here's the bobbin thread that I just pulled up, right here. You can either leave that thread hanging there, um, you can mark it with your pen. Although this does um, disappear pretty quickly, like within minutes, two and three minutes it disappears. I always take a pen, just a regular. I use these big corsage pens to uh, put my um, backs into my litter cloth. I always take a pen and I stick it straight down where that bobbin thread's coming out. And now I don't have to worry about it. It's just that easy. So I'm going to take my quilt clips off. Oops, my bad. I didn't mean to bump you. I'm going to take these off. And I'm going to unlock that one. And I'm going to advance the quilt. Wait, I didn't take my clamps off this side. There we go. One didn't take my clamps off this side. So now I'm going to advance the quilt. I think I want it right there because we need to... Let's go down a little bit. We need to... Go up a quarter of an inch. I think that's perfect. Okay. So I'm going to lock this down. Now again, this measure tape that's running right here, I'm going to make sure all my points are lined up on that. So that edge of the quilt is going to be on that mark. This edge of the quilt is going to be on this mark. These are going to be on my blue borders. And I'm going to make sure the quilt is laying smooth. There's no wrinkles or puckers. I'm going to run my fingers all over this whole quilt. Also, we'll make sure that there, the batting is not folded over on itself or bunched up in there. And that looks perfect. 
So just like that. Now I'm going to reapply my quilt clips. Just as simple as putting them on there and pushing. And that's going to hold your quilt top and batting and all to your pole. Just like that. So here's our pin. It has moved from here to here. And it gives us our screen back. That That's the zone screen. Let me move it here so you can actually see it. I don't know if you can see it in the video. But our blue dots are back. That's our thread breaks. We don't want them. So I'm going to optimize again. And then I'm going to hit remove all. Because I'm going to remove all the thread breaks. All of them. I don't want none of them. Then again, it asked you if you wish to connect the first and the last point. I don't, I cannot think of a scenario where I would want to connect the first and last point, but teach its own. I always hit no because I don't. And then I'm going to hit OK. And as it resets the stitch area, the blue dots will go away. See? Gone. So now we're going to do the same process that we just did. Oh, wait, I need to baste it. So I'm going to come over here to the red toolbox. I'm going to hit baste. I'm going to baste mine on five. So I'm going to turn the speed up to five. And I'm going to baste down both sides. Actually, I'm going to baste up both sides. If you baste up a quilt, you don't stretch it basting it down. And then when you get to the bottom and it be wonky and crooked, you don't want that. Always baste up your quilt. I do have this on a slow base, so it doesn't go very fast. I think it puts one, one stitch a second or something, so just move it. Oop, my thread just broke. So let me re-thread this thing. Get in the hole. Let me come right down here and slow base. I'm going to base this a little closer to the edge, about as close as I can get just so I'm catching it. So they don't have the same issue a while ago where it, when, when it come off and come back on, it kind of fold it over the edge of that quilt. So I'm going to get just as close to the edge as I can. I'm going to give myself some slack, come over here, hit single stitch, and I'm going to pull up this bobbin thread right here. If I can get a hold of just the bobbin thread. There we go. And I'm going to cut both of them layers. Both of them. So now I'm going to come over here to this side and do it. I may come out of camera range. See if I can turn you a little bit. There you go. Don't look at my junk, guys. I'm sorry. Maybe you can actually see. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to go slow based. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving this back and forth, stitching it on both sides so that it kind of makes a knot. And then just slowly sew up this side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go back up. I'll take a single stitch. Run that under there. Get my bobbin thread. So I have both threads. And then I'm going to snip them. You know, let me make a suggestion. Tie your scissors 
your snips, whatever it is that you use on, on your long arm, tie them to your machine. I can't tell you how many times I have walked away and just sat these down and I've hunted and hunted and hunted for my long arm snips. Tie them to your machine, a long thing. Tie them to the handle. However, you need to keep these on your machine because I will walk away with them quick. And the girl that works with me, she walks away with them too. All right, so now we got that basted. Let's turn back over here to the middle-ish of the quilt. Actually, it is the dead middle because it marked it. So, oh, excuse me. So where our pin is right here. Um, you know, I need to get this ruler right here. Okay. So I got my ruler. On this, I'm going to exit. On this particular design, to nest it, to make it where the next one goes up in it and there's no gaps in between my rows, I know I need to go up one quarter of an inch. Now, I know that my foot from the center of my needle to the outside of my foot is one quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move this straight up one quarter of an inch from my foot. So from the outside of my foot to my needle is one quarter of an inch. And I have my needle lined up exactly where the needle comes out of the fabric, where the pin comes out of the fabric. One quarter Yes, of an inch. Just like, excuse me, just like that. I got the hiccups for some reason. Just like that. Now I'm going to hit the green box with the yellow square. And that's, if you watch this right here, it kind of shifts and moves and centers again. See, there it goes. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not. So now our score, our quilt is lined up center. Our design is lined up center. So now all we gotta do is pull bobbin and it's gonna go back down here to this side, way down there, and start sewing again. And then you just do that however many times you need to advance your quilt to get to the bottom of it. Okay, so now I'm going to hit single stitch, pull that bobbin thread up, and see I have it over here so that I can bury it uh, in a minute when I get through, I can just run it through the quilt and bury them. And then I'm going to hit sew. There's that five second delay. That's it guys, that's what it does. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. That's it, guys. I'm done. Have a great day. I will see you in the next one.